there were no rules about licking your fingers. There were no rules about even spitting on your hand. So it was kind of the honor system. And I mean no offense to baseball players, but the honor system doesn't work. The best way to turn a mediocre hitter into a very good hitter is to tell them what's coming. And really what they want to know is, is this pitch going to move? Is it a fastball or is it something else? The 1899 Philadelphia Phillies, first time that we are aware of, where a guy bought some binoculars, got a seat out in center field, zeroed in on the catcher, got the signs, and then you know, put a towel over the fence or something. You can imagine the technology kept getting better. They used rifle scopes, not the rifle, just the scope. John McGraw, who was a famous manager up until the 1930s, he was all for people figuring out how to steal signs. He thought that was an important part of the game, but you can't cheat. Cheating is using electronics, which at that time meant binoculars. And what the Astros did, apparently, was they signaled it with a, with a trash can bang. Scherzer was asked about sign stealing. He said, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we should just allow everyone to steal signs. You know, that should be okay. And it's part of the game, and, and my job is to, is to keep you from stealing my signs. There's probably nothing that everyone thinks is cheating. But if you handed out a poll to all your friends, like, I think steroids would get a lot of checks. Amphetamines became a pretty big thing in baseball certainly by the 70s. And the way the players talked about it was usually like, I went out drinking all night, I came in after one hour's sleep, I took a greenie, and now I was back to normal. When steroids uh, entered the picture, informally, probably in the late 80s, it was different because there was a sense from the fan that the game was changing. Jose Canseco, was the first person that was accused, really credibly accused of, of taking steroids. It was pure muscle, and baseball players were not that big. Mark McGuire, who was huge, broke the all-time home run record for home runs in a season in baseball. And that was a pretty sacrosanct record that was pretty important to baseball fans. And then Barry Bonds, a couple years later, broke their record. And then he ended up breaking the all-time record as well. So it became this huge story that baseball had no control over. But then Congress started to investigate and were thinking about taking control. So I think the two sides were sort of scared into what ultimately happened, which is a um, random testing. But I think there's a sense from most baseball observers that the game has sort of corrected. I think baseball has always had cheating. The kinds of cheating is really based on circumstance. Pitchers discovered in the 1890s and into the early part of the century that if they added lubrication to the ball, you could actually get it to um, not spin as much and therefore it would drop. All that stuff was made illegal um, during the 19-teens and then finally in the 1920s. Gaylord Perry was, I think without question, the most famous spitball pitcher. They changed the rules a couple times during his career. And one of the most important things is they changed the rule that you could no longer touch your fingers to your mouth at all. And what Perry said is that that meant I could no longer use the pure spitball, which is just saliva. He said he would put this, this like really hot um, bomb on his body and his neck, and it would just make him sweat. It was very unattractive. I mean, his hair is just dripping wet. There's a sort of fraternity amongst baseball pitchers. Um, so they were sharing stuff, even you know, opponents. They would be sharing tubs of a recipe that somebody had put together, which is you know, a little bit of pine tar and a little bit of spider tack and a little bit of something else. Well, this stuff is getting more and more uh, sticky. And this is a product that I believe was first invented to help weightlifters carry atlas stones. None of this stuff ever changes because the the players are more devious or more criminal or anything. It changes because people figure out how to do it. It's interesting that the, the bat and the ball are different in a lot of ways. The ball is, is sort of owned by the league, right? The league produces a ball and they're all exactly the same. But the bat, you bring your own. 
you want it to be heavy because it, when it hits the ball, it's, it'll go further. And you want it to be light because you want to be able to swing it as hard as you can. There are people that admitted after their career was over that they used to pound nails in the bottom of the bat, like right here. So pine tar has always been used by batters and it generally is not considered cheating. There are rules about pine tar in terms of how far up the bat it can go. I think it's like 17 inches or something. So I don't know, somewhere around here, people want the batters to have grip. However, it was a rule. And there was a very famous play where George Brett, who used to use a lot of pine tar, because he didn't, he didn't wear batting gloves. He was a great hitter, probably one of the last great hitters that didn't use batting gloves, he used his bare hands. He had a, home, a big home run in Yankee Stadium, but then uh, Billy Martin, who was the manager of the Yankees at the time, came out of the dugout and grabbed the bat and made the umpires measure it. And the umpires ruled that, in fact, he had more pine tar on his bat. It was higher up the bat than he was allowed to have it. Brett kind of goes crazy. I mean, it looks like he's going to kill the ump. It was like a loophole in the rules that, that the Yankees found. The Royals protested the, uh, the call, which is something you could do. Um, and it went up to the league president, the American League president, and he overturned the umpires, which very rarely has ever happened. So they had to replay the end of the game. That's an example of how every player that has lived and loved this game with a different sense of, of morality. And I, I'm not really convinced that any of them are right or wrong. But the other thing people have done over the years is cork a bat. And there's, that is a, a generic term, but really what it means is you, uh, you drill a hole into the bottom of the barrel take the wood out and then replace it with something lighter, styrofoam, rubber balls, cork, and then seal it up again. And different players over the year have been caught doing this. And the only way you can catch someone doing this is have the bat break because you can't really look inside of a bat. There have been uh, games where a bat has broken and cork has flown out. And that's how you know, like, oh my God, Sammy Sosa corks his bat. Um, and this happened to Sammy Sosa, it happened to Albert Bell. Keith Hernandez, who was a longtime player for the Mets and Cardinals, among other teams, he expressed the view that the stuff that the pitcher does should be okay because they're doing it in front of everyone. You can see the ball, you can see their fingers. Um, whereas what a batter does, he's kind of, he's doing it at home. He's more of a mad scientist. I'm Mark Armour. Thank you for watching. Thank you to GQ for having me.